In this podcast, we're going to discuss Coulomb's Law um, as it relates to chemistry. So to do that, we have to understand um, the behavior that occurs between two point charges or two different particles that um, have a specific charge. So if they're like charges, like two positive charges or two negative charges, they will repel one another. They will want to go away from each other. Um, if they're opposite charges, they will be attracted to each other. So this is the same sort of thing as like uh, poles of a magnet. So like poles, like a south pole and a south pole, they are not going to want to come near each other. But if you take a north pole and a south pole, they will be attracted to one another. So same sort of general principle here. All right, so there's a mathematical equation that describes Coulomb's law, which is um, F equal K Q1 Q2 over R squared. As you see over here, um, F is our force of attraction or repulsion. Q1 and Q2, that's the charges of our point charges, both the first one and the second one. R is the distance between your two point charges. And then K is a constant, which means it's always the same, um, which in this case is Coulomb's constant. And it's defined as 9 times 10 to the 9th, okay? Newton's meter squared per Coulomb squared, okay? So that's the general equation we're going to be looking at here. Okay, so how does distance affect force? Okay, well, the closer two ob charged objects become to one another, the stronger the force of attraction or repulsion. So in this example that I'm showing you here, they are both um, opposite charge, so they're going to be attracted. So the closer I get them, the stronger the force of attraction will be between them. Now, the converse is also true. So the further I pull them apart, the weaker the force of attraction will be between these two things. So if you will think about this um, in terms of the equation, so our equation was F equal, and then for this case, because we're just talking conceptually here, I'm not going to refer to, um, I'm not going to use the K, but understand that there is a K, okay? And then we have uh, Q1, Q2 over R squared, right? That's our general equation here, okay? So to see how we use this equation to look at these things, okay, let's say that um, our Q1 and our Q2 are positive 1 and negative 1, okay? So 1 times 1 over, and we'll say that our first distance is just 1, 1 uh, meter there, okay? So if you look at it that way, we have 1 times 1 over 1 squared, so our force of attraction begins at 1, okay? Now, what if I increased that distance? What if I changed this bottom number, this R value? Okay, so let's leave our charges the same. So 1 times 1 over an increase in distance, we'll say we increase it to 2. Now we square that, right? So now we've got 1 over 4, okay? So our force decreased by a fourth, okay? It went down by one-fourth. Conversely, if you did the opposite, say instead of um, my distance being one, say I decreased my distance to 0.5, so say I have one times one over 0.5 squared, okay? So now you're in a mathematical situation where 0.5 squared is Let's see, 0.5 times 0.5. Okay, it's 0.25, right? And then 1 divided by 0.25 is 4. So now our force is times 4, okay? So the closer they are, the stronger the force of attraction. The further they are, the weaker the force of attraction. Okay, now charge also affects force. So the higher the charge, the stronger the force of attraction. The lower the charge, the weaker the force of attraction. Okay, so again, let's pretend that we start with 1 times 1 over 1 for our force. Okay, and so our beginning force is 1. Now if we increase those point charges, to say a charge of 2, leave the distance the same. All right, now you've got 4 over 1, which is 4, right? So four times the amount of force of attraction between the two. 
All right, and also if we decreased it, so say 0 0.5 times 0.5 over 1 squared. So now we have 0.25 over 1, which is also known as 1 fourth. So if we decrease the uh, point charges charges, then it decreases, okay? So the bigger the point charge, the larger the force of attraction, the smaller the point charge, the weaker the force of attraction. So what the heck, why do we care? What does this have to do with chemistry? Well, so many things in chemistry have charges. Using Coulomb's law, we can understand which has weaker forces of attraction, which has stronger forces of attraction, and why things are attracted to each other in the first place.